a warm welcome to all visa stakeholders from all over the world who are listening in today. Um, we, we are doing the part two of the uh, dialogue on visas action lines in SDG matrix. And I have here with me Mr. Matthias Kern from the Basel Convention UNEP and uh, Orhan Osami from the uh, ITU. They are focal points and uh, co-facilitators of the action line e-environment. Hello, Matthias. Um, Matthias, environment protection is an extremely important component of the SDGs. How does e-environment contribute to that? The environment is um, affected by a lot of um, end-of-life e-products, unfortunately. And uh, we have to ensure that the um, the positive sides of the ITC, ICT sector is not affecting, on the other hand, negatively the environment. Um, as ICT technology is growing exponentially, which is uh, for a big, big benefit for the development of many countries, at the same time, the e-waste is also the fastest growing waste stream internationally right now. At the moment, we are estimating 40 million tons of e-waste annually uh, from end-of-life computing equipment. So we have to ensure that these, are, these amounts are primarily reduced or if we have to recycle them, they have to be handled in an environmentally sound manner and not just dumped somewhere in the environment. Thank you, Matthias. Orhan, um, ICTs play an important role in the IC, in the disaster risk management. Uh, what is your opinion on that, and how does that relate to the SDGs? I think, uh, as you know, ICTs, ICTs play an important role in our daily lives, and especially when it comes to disaster, we have uh, different phases of disaster. So, uh, if you look at the ICTs, uh, are very important in in sending alerts on time so people can evacuate and save their lives. And at the same time, ICTs are important and telecommunications are important during the response time. So basically to coordinate the efforts of, of saving lives and, and other related uh, matters. Thank you. Action Line C6 e-environment links to the SDGs 9, 11, 13, 14 and 15. How can this Action Line com contribute to the implementation of the SDGs? Action Line C7 E environment. So, practically, uh, the Action Line activities, what, whatever is happening, we are creating awareness. We are making issues more aware to different communities, especially in, in, in this regard when it comes to E environment. The ICT community has to be aware of what are the positive sides and risks uh, about uh, using ICTs and so on. So, basically, creating awareness, creating uh, a forum for partnerships so it's uh, it's something which is uh, really good at this section line and it helps a lot I think maybe my Matthias can add a few words on this yes the the um, um, SDG on sustainable consumption for instance it's an uh, easy goal to address for instance uh, we have to think on how to use the e-products in the moment the lifetime uh, or the replacement of uh, mobile phones and laptops is about uh, two, maximum three years. But if we think that uh, the lifetime of a computer is much more, in the moment there is only 20% of the, uh, the potential of a laptop from the battery side and from the hardware side is used. So if we could extend the amount of um, the productive life of an IT equipment to say four, five, six years, that would already uh, bring a big advantage and, and serves the SDG on sustainable consumption. Thank you very much indeed, Matthias. Uh, we would now move to the Action Line Facilitator of C5. It's Mr. Preetam Malur from the International Telecommunications Union. ITU is the sole facilitator of Action Line C5. Uh, hello, Preetam. Welcome. Uh, any reference to ICTs is incomplete without talking about building confidence and security in its use. Can you elaborate on your impressions of the recognition of the fact in the SDGs versus linkage matrix? Sure. Uh, thank you, Gitanjali, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to talk about uh, Action Line C5, which ITU is the sole facilitator of. 
back in 2000, when uh, the world community was defining the MDGs, uh, you know, one in 15 people were online, and that was also primarily uh, uh, in the Western world. Uh, barely anyone had a cell phone. So it's not surprising that when you're defining the SDGs, uh, ICTs was really not on the radar. So you, you see very little uh, references to ICTs. Fast forward 2015, no, uh, there are more cell phones than people in the world. Uh, internet is now a global public good. Uh, it's recognized as a global public resource. Uh, it, the word cyber is uh, probably one of the most common uh, prefixes used. So you would assume that ICTs would appear everywhere on the uh, when you're defining the SDGs, uh, the post-2015 uh, Sustainable Development Goals. But strangely, it's not so. And uh, probably one of the reasons is uh, it's, uh, ICTs are so pervasive uh, that you really people think you really don't need to define those uh, explicitly in the SDGs. So from the MDGs in 2000 to the SDGs in 2015, uh, life has essentially come a full circle. But anyway. Uh, that apart, when uh, ITU as the action line facilitator uh, for C5 uh, was mapping, doing the mapping exercise, mapping the goals and sub goals of uh, action line C5 security with the MDGs, uh, with the sorry, the SDGs, we realized that if it's accepted that ICTs are an enabler, uh, is a tool for achieving a large number, if not all of the SDGs, then it's also clear that uh, you need to have trust and confidence in using the tool. So with this logic, it's very clear that uh, if you do the mapping exercise, uh, many, many of the goals and sub-goals, even by a conservative estimate, uh, uh, would be uh, uh, directly relevant when you consider security in the use of ICTs. Thank you. Are there any specific issues that you would like to highlight as being particularly important among the SDGs in this respect? There are quite a few, but uh, I'd like to highlight the issue of uh, protection of children and young people online, because you see a reflection of uh, uh, the importance of uh, youth, of children, in many of the uh, SDGs, the goals and the sub-goals. Uh, and uh, it's important to remember that the online component here is just as important as the offline component because, uh, you know, uh, the, the children, the youth now are digital citizens. They've been born with ICTs, uh, not like the previous generation who had to get used to it. So, for example, if I look at, uh, and excuse me for my paper, which I dropped, but if you look at goal 16.2, uh, and it's, it's, end abuse, exploitation, trafficking, and all forms of violence against and torture of children. Clearly, here the online uh, child sexual abuse content uh, should be treated within the same framework. And uh, this goes for several other examples also. Thank you very much. Indeed, security is extremely important in today's time with the uh, extensive use of information and communication technologies. Thank you, Preetam. Uh, we have the privilege of uh, uh, Mr. Cedric Washholz joining us today. He's the coordinator of VISIS in UNESCO. And uh, UNESCO facilitates six action lines. Uh, C3 Access, C7 E-Learning, C7 E-Science, C8 Culture, C9 Media, and C10 Ethics. Um, Cedric, is there any particular action lines from the matrix that can be seen as contributing most to the implementation of the SDGs? For example, C3 Access. Thank you, Kitanjali. Um, thank you for this opportunity for us to contribute uh, to this exercise. Um, UNESCO has in 2014 and 15 implementing some 583 activities to implement the WISIS outcomes. So I haven't classified how many of these activities will directly cl contribute to the SDGs. You mentioned uh, C3 access and um, C3 access is actually the action line on access to information and knowledge. For us, UNESCO, it is not only access to connectivity and infrastructure, then access to information and knowledge includes a lot more uh, than the hardware uh, component. And it is therefore also about the empowerment of people to use technologies, for example, addressing uh, challenges in terms of multilingualism, disabilities is also linked to access. 
and it's true, if you have such a broad definition of access to information and knowledge, it does actually cross, cut across all SDGs because very much of the SDG goals are linked to the building of capacity of people, to learning and, uh, and to access to information and knowledge. So it's true, uh, access to information and knowledge is a great cross-cutting action line which will fully contribute to all SDGs. Thank you, Cedric. Uh, several UNESCO action lines connect to goal four, for example, uh, equitable quality education and promoting lifelong learning. How can action lines contribute to the implementation of this goal? So I think uh, it is actually also, again, a quite cross-cutting uh, action line contributing to different goals. But if you look at these SDGs, it actually, uh, this SDG, it has actually seven sub-goals. And some of them link directly also to other action lines. My colleague from UNCTAD is facilitating the e-business action line. And if you look at the um, SDG uh, 4 goal you just mentioned on education, it includes, for example, to educate youth and um, train them on, on uh, becoming uh, entrepreneurial, uh, to get vocational training and skills uh, in order to get jobs in the future. And that, for example, is an immediate opportunity to cooperate. For us, we have it quite easy also to, to cooperate and, uh, and work across different action lines because UNESCO is facilitating six, so a third of all action lines. And if you again look at the goal four you just mentioned, it includes also um, the, uh, the goal, the sub-goal of appreciating cultural diversity. So our cultural action line uh, contributes directly to this goal, uh, su sustainable development goal four two. And so there are a number of, of sub-goals within this education goal where we have the opportunity to, to cooperate with other international organizations, but also across our different action lines. Thank you very much, Cedric. Thank you for joining us Thank today. Uh, we now move to Mr. Torbjorn Fredriksen. He is the action line facilitator for uh, e-business, action line C7 e-business. And in fact, uh, Torbjorn, um, this action line is also co-facilitated by UPU and ITC. This is correct. And thank you also for this uh, excellent opportunity to, to share some of our findings after this uh, useful mapping exercise that we have undertaken to look at the links between WISIS action lines and, um, uh, and the uh, SDGs. And maybe I should just mention uh, something about what e-business is all about, because um, um, we often talk about how ICT can support different areas of development, but in order for developing countries to really make use, effective use of uh, ICTs, they need to have their own capabilities in the ICT sector. And that's very much what e-business is all about. So one aspect of e-business is how to strengthen the local ICT sector in developing countries. The other is how to enhance the use of ICT in the local business sector, also outside of the ICT sector in developing countries. So that means that it can affect many parts of the SDGs and many parts of the um, WISIS action lines as well. Definitely. Uh, importance of employment and job creation is highlighted in the SDGs. How does the e-business action line address this? Well, it comes in many different ways because uh, productive, um, uh, productivity increases is a very important element of this and uh, by helping small and micro enterprises to make better use of ICTs, we can help them to become more productive. Uh, by helping uh, small and micro enterprises to make use of uh, the internet, for example, uh, in order to sell and buy their products, they can uh, reach uh, greater sales and they may be able to lower the cost of inputs. Uh, Another aspect is, of course, to promote women's entrepreneurship. Uh, if we have uh, looked at uh, the specific challenges that women entrepreneurs in developing countries face, and many of those challenges can be overcome by effective use of ICTs. In addition to that, we have very dynamic uh, ICT sectors growing now in developing countries, which often offer special youth employment opportunities, especially for the skilled youth. So there are many aspects of this that are coming through when you start mapping the action line with the uh, SDGs. Of course, this leads to my uh, third question because, uh, of course, this shows that uh, the action line contributes to poverty eradication, which is a very important aspect of uh, the sustainable development goals. What are your views on that? 
No, this is true. Ultimately, this is, uh, of course, the goal of the development work, that we should be able to reduce poverty. And, and we see this mainly as a way to improve the livelihoods of poor people uh, in rural areas in particular, but also in urban slums. And the ICT can make a big difference there, uh, not least by empowering the smallholder farmers, rural enterprises and micro-enterprises to actually find new job opportunities, new revenue sources, and thereby uh, better livelihoods and ultimately less poverty. Thank you very much, Torbjorn. And uh, I hope that uh, we are successful with the implementation of the action lines uh, for furthering the goals of the SDGs. Thank you very much. Uh, I have here with me my colleague, uh, Mr. Taka, uh, Yuki Sugumoto. He is the action line facilitator for uh, ICT infrastructure. So ICT infrastructure is all pervasive and uh, uh, business action lines are actually uh, uh, dependent on ICT infrastructure. There has to be proper infrastructure to be able to do things related to ICTs. So uh, my first question to you, Taka, would be um, ICT infrastructure is crucial for the implementation of business action lines. How can Action Line C2 help achieve the SDGs or help uh, fasten the implementation of the SDGs? Yes. Um, so the WSIS Action Line C2 can uh, help achieving the sustainable development goals by uh, finding out uh, what are the barriers such as regulatory infrastructure, affordability, usage, and we can uh, have suggest solutions such as private and uh, public partnerships and affordable uh, equipment and so on. So if everybody could be able to access the internet, um, for instance, they can use the new and innovative services such as um, online shopping, e-ticketing, uh, mobile banking, you can name it, there is much more and they can act, have everything will be cheaper, faster, and moreover, there will be no difference in living in a city of a developed country uh, or living in a remote village in a developing world. So having a broad and secure uh, broadband access, uh, the world will be much better tomorrow. Thank you. Nowadays, access to the internet is a new basic service necessary for all people. However, statistics show that there is a huge gap between the developing and the developed world, which needs to be addressed. How can Action Line C2 address that gap and which goals, in your opinion, which SDG goals is that linked to? Oh, yes. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that we think that we did a great job, actually. Starting from the first visit, which was 2003, um, so the world is now covered with uh, mobile networks. So um, even in the developing world, the mobile penetration rate is almost 100%. So everybody has a uh, mobile phone in their hands. So covering the world with internet access, it is a big challenge. However, we believe that it is actually possible. And that is exactly what is written in the uh, Sustainable Development Goal. I think it's goal nine, uh, resilient infrastructure. And goal 919A, 9C, which uh, if, if I summarize, it should be sustainable uh, development uh, of infrastructure for uh, economic uh, development, and particularly having the uh, internet access and ICT infrastructure in the least development countries by 2020. So Action Line C2 is collecting the best case studies so that people can learn find, and take out the findings. We are having uh, direct uh, assistance, for instance, wireless broadband network developments and emergency relief uh, also, we are doing some uh, mapping of the broadband backbones, which you can find out the missing links and the opportunities. And I think we shouldn't forget that we are having an annual meeting here in the uh, WSIS Forum. And for the development of ICT infrastructure in the uh, developing world, it is very important that 
all sectors cooperate. Regulatory people, government, uh, private, industry, and maybe the civil society. And so it, is, so it is very important for them, each other, to see, know, and understand each other. And only through those collaborations, uh, our goals, will, those goals, sustainable development goals, will be uh, fulfilled. So if you are a part of the uh, ICT infrastructure uh, builders, uh, please join us. We have plenty of work to do, and it can't be done without your collaboration. Thank you, Takayuki Sugimoto. Um, he is the facilitator of the Action Line uh, C2 ICT infrastructure, and ITU is the sole facilitator of this Action Line. So as we have seen in the two uh, dialogues uh, in, in two parts uh, for the VISIS Action Lines and SDG Matrix, uh, SDGs have a direct and clear linkage uh, with the business action lines and vice versa. We have heard from the experts today, from the, uh, uh, from the business action line facilitators, from the different UN agencies, and uh, we welcome you to please visit our uh, website, www.wisis.org slash SDGs, where you can read the entire document on the WISIS and SDGs mapping and matrix exercise. We thank you very much and we hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.